This is a fourth video about PLCs and in this video you can see how to work with more than one PLC in a project and how to control addresses and descriptions across several pages. This video is about some of the tricks that you can use when you work with larger PLC projects. I made this small uh, PLC demo project here uh, and you can make exactly the same one uh, by using the things that you have in your own installation. This first page here consists simply of four, no, six uh, empty PLC reference output symbols and, and it's this one. I just placed six of them here and they called K1 all of them. Um, and then I have a page uh, with the reference symbols for some digital in and outputs and another page for some analog in and outputs. And then the rest of the projects are simply sub drawings that I placed. And those sub drawings you can I found them in this folder and you'll have that in version 16. Or if you don't have version 16 you can download some um, a, a, a demo folder from our home page. And when you work with sub drawings, they simply work this way that you drag it in and uh, you can drag another in and they'll place themselves. And uh, then I have um, uh, the last one here, just drag it on. And this is the way that you work with sub drawings. It's an advanced way of copying circuits. And um, this is uh, definitely <laughs> the way to go if you want to be uh, quick and easily finished with your projects. But that's another story. This story here is about the PLCs and um, how to work with them when they uh, span across several pages. And the first issue that I have is this one here. I have this PLC uh, consisting of um, at least 48 outputs. And those 48 outputs are placed here in six reference, symbol, uh, reference symbols. And I could go in when I want to uh, give them their addresses by uh, clicking uh, one symbol at a time, going into the type here with IO address and type in the first address of this one and go to this one and give it the next address and so on, but I don't want to do that. Instead, I will go to this um, uh, menu here and, s and use the item called Readdress PLC Reference Symbols. And if I take this one, I have this dialog here in which I can readdress all my um, all my reference symbols at once. And I can uh, select between inputs and outputs, or, or two different routines via inputs and outputs. And then I can uh, select my, uh, my my reference symbols by either IO status type or by address prefix. And this one here, I'll just select my address prefix. It doesn't really matter this one, but um, anyway, I'll do that. If I uh, go in here and select this filter here, I can go down and select the symbols that I want to, or the components that I, I want to readdress. And K1, 48 uh, symbols here. And the first address, I'll call it 0.00. I'll use the octal numbering system, meaning that I'll start from the beginning on each um, uh, on, on each um, uh, symbol. And if I click Execute, you can see again 48. Execute, 48 addresses have been updated. And when you click, see this project here, you can see the 00, zero and 10, and 20s, and 30s, and f f 40s, etc. And when I have all those addresses here. Remember, the the reference symbols are the one that control all the addresses. I could go up here and say I want to transfer these addresses throughout my, my, my project here. And if I go up here and say now I want to use this address prefix and I want to use a prefix called zero, you can see I have defined in my project 48 addresses on my PLC reference symbols but I have no in my project. And now I want to tell you about the prefix, but because what's a prefix? You saw here that I have different prefixes in my project. I could have a prefix for um, yeah anything, but think uh, when when you see a PLC product, I guess mm -hmm. that you recognize that um, uh, manufacturers each have their own prefixes, or many of them do. And you'll find in, in a certain manufacturer's component series, you'll find a prefix that indicates digital inputs or digital outputs, analog inputs, analog outputs. And you know that this, this prefix doesn't just belong with one single article number, but it belongs to a series of digital inputs or digital outputs. And you know that you can mix those components that are digital inputs or digital outputs uh, together in the same system. And that's what we use here. Simply a 
a filter that says that if I have digital inputs and digital outputs throughout my project, I want to be able to transfer the correct addresses to the correct symbols throughout my project. And that's uh, what I can do here. So, if I select this uh, prefix here of O dot, then I can do nothing. And you can see here, if I click execute, nothing happens because I don't have any output symbols to transfer those addresses to. And that's uh, pretty, pretty fair and pretty okay. So, instead, I'll go in again, and this time I will once again readdress those here prefix, and uh, I'll go down and say this time my address will be do.00, that will be the first one, and I'll select my K1, 48 addresses, and I'll click execute, and 48 addresses have been updated. And um, now I can transfer those, um, those addresses through my system. And you see here PLC transfer addresses, I'll select this prefix called do, and now I have in my project 55 outputs and um, I have um, 6 outputs throughout my project that I can uh, give this new address. And this function here I've got this filter here with the prefixes and I could select uh, between different reference designations, functional and locational. I don't have any filters here so, so that's the reason why you, you can see the zero here. But when I transfer the addresses, the only thing is that it's so stupid that it will take them from the beginning. So the first time it meets another symbol, an output symbol, with this uh, prefix here, it will it'll pair the two. So when I click Execute here, I have updated six addresses and close, and this is simply the um, the, uh, the sequence uh, in in my in my system here or in my project here. So this is exactly how they are placed throughout my system, and and you can see this one. Maybe that was no, that that was one of the last ones that I had because they were inputs, the ones that I just transferred here. So you can see by simply sorting through or filtering through the system based on digital output or the prefix for digital outputs, then I've transferred the addresses and that's the idea of this. Um, I might have some other um, uh, ways of filtering through and that's, um, and I, I, I promise that I'll tell you about the status type. If I click this one, you can see that this connection point has got a status type. And status types could be digital, they could be analog, they could be my own private, they could be anything. And when I say anything, I mean anything, because if you go to this PLC here, you can um, define your own PLC reference or the PLC status types. And uh, here, analog digital, if you want to create another one, click new and type in the new status type that you would want. And that's it. And then you can select it in the project. Um, so uh, if I want to, to use that, I can go up here, PLC, status type, uh, click this one and say digital. And then you can see I have output addresses, three, no, input addresses, four, and then the ones that I have here. And then I have six in my project, so I don't really have enough in my uh, in my reference that would be a warning for me to say, okay, if you want to update all input addresses with this status type, you'll need to place one more um, uh, reference symbol, but I don't do that in this example here, but that's really what the the red line should uh, tell you. But click Execute, click OK and close, and then you can see it's all been um, updated. So um, yeah, that's what this one would do. But then I have something here called locked addresses, because no matter what, I know that sometimes and always in my projects, maybe I would have some um, input or output functions that would always need to be in the same address because that, I, this is a safety that you, you talk about here. So, um, And if you want to do that, I know that the last one that I placed here was with a locked address. If I click this one here, you can see it's locked, it's got a tick here and the same on the reference symbol. So. 
if I want to pair this one, uh, th there's only one way to do it, and it's exactly the same as you saw in the first video. You would look up here, I.O. address, and then you'd have to scroll through this one, and it's called I100, and then here I have one emergency stop with locked address, exactly the same text, exactly the same address, and I'll click OK, and I will click OK, and then you can see it had the new terminal name, it had the new address and it got the reference so now those two are paired exactly the same as you did before that means that now you have the tools to work with small projects maybe even without any article numbers and you have the tool to work with components that means components and you pick from the database and then you can transfer addresses between the, uh, the symbols when you work with large projects so really Keep up the good work and uh, I hope you enjoyed the videos.